All right, turn with me, if you would, tonight. James chapter 5. James chapter 5 is where we're going to go back and pick up from where we left off last week. Uh, I want to touch on real quick a couple things uh, that we were finishing up with last week in our study because I had a couple people that actually from our church came and asked some questions about one of the areas that we were discussing. And so I wanted to try to bring a little more clarity to that. And then tonight, we're going to zero in and focus on, in this, this part of our study, on our healing study course, the gifts of the Spirit as they relate to healing. We're going to talk about the gifts of the Spirit tonight as they relate to healing. We've been going now through several weeks in this study about the different ways of how we can receive healing uh, in our bodies. Praise God. Thank God God gave us all different ways, different avenues by which we can be healed because He knew one would work for one and one would work for another. But I promise you this, praise the Lord, I uh, guarantee you, you can tap into what God has for you through one of these avenues of healing. Amen? So last week, we were talking about the three primary ways in which God heals. Those three primary ways that God heals, not the only, but the three primary ways is number one, simple faith. Now simple faith is nothing more and it's the, it's the ideal way for me and you to learn how to walk in healing for our lives. And the reason for that, why that's so important for us, is because if anybody needs healing in their body, all they have to do is understand what the Word of God says, put faith in that Word, pertaining to healing, and in exercising their faith in the Word of God, they can be healed. That's simple. So that is what we call simple faith, which is the most powerful and obviously most uh, easy way for uh, people to be healed. It's something that Brother Hagin uh, talked about many times as we're going to relate to gifts of healings tonight, is that that's the number one way for believers to learn how to get healed is to be able to just simply walk in a simple faith in the Word of God, as opposed to waiting around for the gifts of the Spirit, I mean, to manifest. So we'll talk about that in just a minute. So three primary ways to get healed. One, simple faith. Just put your faith in what the Word of God says. Receive what the Word of God says. Two, laying on of hands. Now, the laying on of hands, as we talked about, can refer to us just simply as a believer, uh, fulfilling the Great Commission. Mark 16, 18, you lay hands on the sick. They shall recover. All they got to do is have faith in what Jesus did, believe in that promise of the Word, and as you lay hands upon them, if they believe in that promise of the Word and what Jesus did for their healing, they can be healed. Now that also includes the laying on of hands, anointing with oil by the elders of the church. We're going to read that in a verse here in just a minute to talk about and kind of clarify something that I think some people had a confusion on. So number two, uh, simple uh, faith is number one. Number two, laying on of hands is another primary way upon which people can get healed. Number three, and this is what some people were confused about, praying the power, praying the power of God into manifestation. Now, praying the power, and, uh, power of God into manifestation in examples that I know of that I've read about, I have not personally experienced this in my own personal life. I have experienced... Uh, actually a manifestation a couple times of gifts of healings as we'll talk about tonight most of what I have seen as most ministers do see and most believers see in relationship to people being healed is just telling people what the Bible says they put their faith in the word they get healed or by laying on of hands and those are the primary two ways God's going to use us most of the time in the area of healing but you can have also what's known as the power excuse me praying the power into manifestation. In the examples where I have seen this talked about in Brother Hagin's life, I'm going to share another example tonight of a, a Smith Wigglesworth's life. Most of the time, this is prompted by the Spirit of God for you to go do. Where a person may be sick and, and, and God moves upon somebody to get a group of people together, go to them and just get in that uh, uh, room with them, surround them and start praying, primarily praying in the Holy Ghost. As some people have asked, what do you pray about? Well, you pray as you're led by the Spirit. So you can certainly pray as the Word of God speaks about in relationship to healing, healing scriptures over them. But most of the time where this actually in testimonies I've heard about, where this is actually manifest and then healings come, they've been praying in the Holy Spirit uh, probably for quite a period of time. So this is one of the uh, avenues, one of the primary avenues that we talked about last week of three uh, ways that God can heal. That's praying the power 
into manifestation. Is there a verse for this? Yes, there is. James chapter 5. And I'm going to go back to James 5 verse 14, read down to the verse that we're talking about so that you can kind of see the difference here between the laying on of hands and anointing of oil as opposed to what James then says is actually bringing forth the power of God in a manifestation through prayer. All right, James 5 verse 14, James says, Is there any among you sick? Now he's writing to the church, actually churches here. This letter was distributed to multiple churches. Is there uh, is anyone among you sick? Now that's we've already mentioned this multiple times, but bears worth repeating. Uh, why would he ask that question to uh, multiple churches as this letter was being circulated through multiple churches? Well, one of the reasons why is because obviously God doesn't want anybody in the church sick. Amen. He wouldn't ask the question unless he had an answer about how they could get healed. God wants you healed in Jesus' name. He wants it more than you want it. And he's provided, as we've already talked about in this series, he's already provided that healing for us through what Christ did at Calvary. All right, he goes on to tell you then, if there is anyone among you sick, here's one of the ways, actually he's going to reveal two, I'm sorry, ways that you can get healed. One, let him call for the elders of the church. Let them do what? Pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Now again, remember, this isn't the only way you can get healed. This is just one of the ways that you can get healed. Now he goes right on and says in verse 15, in, in the context of anointing with oil, elders of the church, you call the elders of the church. They come or you go to the church, call for the elder to anoint you with oil. Verse 15, and they pray the prayer of faith. As they anoint you with oil, they pray the prayer of faith. What is the prayer of faith? Well, the prayer of faith is certainly not man's natural form of faith. It's what we know as Bible faith. And Bible faith takes what is a promise of God. We have a promise of God that healing is for everybody today. It takes that promise. It brings it into a present day reality. So you definitely need to know that you're going to an elder that believes in healing, that believes in anointing with oil, and knows how to pray the prayer of faith. How do they pray the prayer of faith? They call your body healed. They speak over your body and declare it healed. They bring what's a promise into a present day reality. Now sure, and I've done it before, as you're praying for somebody, anointing, with oil, anointing them with oil, you can pray and say, thank you Father that you have promised in your word healing for our bodies. I thank God right now by the anointing of God you touch this body I now call this body healed. So to truly pray the prayer of faith, at some point in that prayer, you've got to declare that body healed. You don't pray and say, Lord, I'm asking you to heal them. You've got to finish that prayer by saying, now I thank you this body's healed. They are healed right now in the name of Jesus. That's the prayer of faith. It's bringing it to a present reality, calling it done, okay? So they anoint with all, they pray the prayer of faith. Notice this verse 15, and the prayer of faith will save the sick. Absolute. It's an absolute. Didn't say it might. The prayer of faith will save the sick. The Lord will raise him up. And if he's committed sins, they'll be forgiven. Now that ends right there what James was talking about in relationship to coming to the elders of the church or calling for the elders of the church to be anointed with oil, pray the prayer of faith, and then they're healed because the Lord will raise them up. They will receive healing and the Lord will raise them up. Now, the, the qualifiers there are, the person that obviously is asking for this has to release their faith in what Jesus did for them at the time they're anointed with oil. They have to believe right then and there According to the Word of God, I'm healed. It's a done deal right now. So they have to have the faith for that. The elder has to know and have faith in this promise that it'll work and pray the prayer of faith. If you get those two things together in agreement, you now have the prayer that what we talked about before. You now have the power of God present and faith released combined to bring healing. Those two things, healing comes. Amen. So now in verse 16, though, he goes on and says, Confess your trespasses to one another. Watch this. And pray for one another. Pray for one another that you may be healed. Notice what he says right after this in the same verse. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Now the Amplified actually brings out to us 
at the end of verse 16, what the Greek actual says, Greek language, original Greek language says here in the New Testament. It actually says that the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man, amplified says, makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. Notice that. It makes tremendous power available. Now, even if you pray the power into manifestation, and I guarantee you what, you'll know, <laughs> you will definitely know when that power is into manifestation there at that moment in prayer, they, the person in the room, still has to then receive by faith that power that's available to heal their bodies. Amen? So that is praying the power into manifestation. That's what he's telling us in verse 16 as he says that you can pray for one another that you may be healed. You could say it this way, for the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much, makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. And I'll just give you a testimony, not like major in detail, because we need to move on tonight to the gifts of the Spirit in relationship to healing. But I, I've heard it multiple times. Forgive me if I get it wrong, but I'm pretty sure if you've ever read Smith Wigglesworth's uh, book, uh, Ever Increasing Faith, I believe this testimony is in the book, Ever Increasing Faith. There was a woman... That, and I don't remember her condition. Might have been cancer or something, but she uh, actually had was diagnosed with an incurable condition. And uh, Brother Wigglesworth was made known about this and was asked if they would come pray for her. He was actually in a different city ministering at the time. He talked to the pastor and he said, Can you gather for me several people that know how to truly pray, his words, the power of God down? And that's kind of how that phrase came about of old Pentecostal circles, praying the power down. It's, just, it's the same thing as us saying, praying the power into manifestation. And so uh, the pastor said, yeah, I can get several people. So they got together. They went over to the lady's home. They went up to her bedroom. They all gathered around that bed. I don't know. It doesn't tell you in the testimony how long they prayed. I just know Brother Wigglesworth said they all get they all grabbed hands together and surrounding that bed where this woman was, they just began to pray. And obviously, if you read a lot about Brother Wigglesworth, you know they just got into the point of where they were just praying in the Holy Ghost. And as they were praying in the Holy Ghost, Brother Wigglesworth's uh, statement, the Holy Spirit, the power of God fell in that room and just manifested in that room. And I actually believe in that testimony, the woman actually uh, began to rise up off of that bed supernaturally, and the power of God hit her, and she received it, and she was instantly healed, jumped up off that bed totally well. So that's what we mean by praying the power into manifestation. Now, again, I believe in this case, similar to the example I gave last week of Brother Hagin's testimony, this was something that Brother Wigglesworth I believe clearly was motivated by the Holy Spirit to do because he could have just gone over there himself, laid hands on her and prayed for her. He could have gone and anointed her with oil. Anointed her with oil. Uh, one of the things about going and ministering to people in the area of healing is we need to be sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit, to the leading of the Holy Spirit. So when you talk about praying the power into manifestation, in the testimonies that I've heard about this, it's pretty obvious in the testimony that the Holy Spirit was leading them to do that. And I'll guarantee you what, it doesn't mean we can't believe for that because we know we can. We got a verse for it right here in James 5.16. Because if you can, now the key here is you don't just want to get, you know, any group of believers together to do this. You've got to get people like Brother Wigglesworth told that pastor, he said, do you have anybody in your church that know how to pray the power down, that really know how to tap into God and, and obviously not, you know, not be you know, distracted by their soul or anything else, just be able to, to just draw into the presence of God, pray and, and get into the presence of God and let that power manifest. And he said, yeah, i got several people that can. So realize these are people that really know how, need to know how to pray. And, and just tap into the, the presence of the Holy Spirit. But that's what we're referring to. We have scripture for it. This is not something that's just made up by, you know, Brother Hagen or Smith Wigglesworth, although they saw it happen. James 5.16 tells us that you can pray for one another because in doing so, you can make tremendous power available. Pretty awesome. Amen? Could I get an amen on that? Praise the Lord. 
So, to kind of wrap that up from last week, so hopefully we got that uh, question answered for people. That's what we're referring to. Now, tonight, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We're going to talk about the gifts of the Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit as it relates to to receiving healing in our life. Gifts of the Spirit, all right? I want you to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We're going to pick it up here in verse 7, and we're going to read through these gifts uh, just briefly, and then we're going to touch on three of these gifts tonight as they relate to healing. Amen? All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. But the manifestation... I'm going to point out a couple key things here, very important we're going to talk about tonight. The manifestation of the Spirit... That's why we call them uh, the gifts of the Spirit because it is the Holy Spirit that manifests, brings them into being. It is the Holy Spirit that does this. The manifestation gifts, excuse me, manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. Now I want you to notice this. For to one, everybody say one. Say one. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit. To another, the word of knowledge, through the same Spirit. To another, faith. Now that is actually what we're going to talk about, one of the gifts tonight, and this is not what we have as general or saving faith, and this is not also the the fruit of faith that's one of the fruits of the Spirit. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. This is what we call uh, a form of supernatural faith. Alright? So again, he says in verse 9, to another, Faith, or what we're going to call supernatural faith, is also given by the same Spirit to another gifts of healings. By the same Spirit, verse 10, to another working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. Look at verse 11, very important. But one and the same Spirit, one and the same Spirit works all these things, listen carefully to the last part of the verse, distributing to each one individually as he wills. Now, something important to note about this, all right? You got to remember this as we recognize tonight gifts of the Spirit in the area of receiving healing. It is the Holy Spirit, number one, who distributes out of these uh, gifts of the Spirit, nine manifestation gifts of the Spirit, it is the Holy Spirit who determines how those gifts are distributed within the body of Christ. Jesus Christ was given the Spirit without measure, but the body was not given the Spirit without measure, as you're going to see in a minute, because if we, if we, as the, if, if we individually, one person like me, as, as an individual member of the body, if I had the Spirit without measure, then that means that I could operate as an apostle, a prophet, an evangelist, a pastor, as a teacher, but I can't because obviously God does not give, the, or in that case, those are the fivefold ministry gifts. Jesus does not give all fivefold man, uh, ministry gifts, excuse me, all fivefold uh, gifts of the of the uh, offices of the ministry to every to one individual. No one individual is going to be an apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, what we call the fivefold ministry gifts. No one person is going to have all those. But Jesus did. Jesus operated in all five of those. And so recognize that it's the Holy Spirit, not us, who determines how these gifts are distributed, number one. Number two, it is the Holy Spirit that manifests these gifts as he wills. Now I want you to hear me clearly. We need to get our faith. We need to get our faith in operation for these gifts. We need to we need to believe God for him to operate in these gifts through our life. Without a doubt, we want to have faith for this. But we don't want to go to the degree that we're trying to manifest them on our own. Can't do that. It is the Holy Spirit that manifests these gifts as he wills. And I'll guarantee you, as long as you are somebody who is walking in obedience to the Word, you are yielding yourself 
to the Holy Spirit's leading, I promise you this, if you'll follow His leading when it comes to ministering to people, you're walking in obedience to the Word, if He wants to manifest those gifts through you, He will. Amen? But those are two key points I want to emphasize tonight, because again, He said He gives to one, He gives to one the Word of Wisdom, to another the Word of Knowledge, to another um, gift of faith, to another uh, gifts of healings, working in miracles, etc. So recognize, number one, it's the Holy Spirit that determines who gets, uh, you know, primarily which of these gifts you're going to operate in. Now, you're going to mostly see in the body of Christ, as an individual, you're going to see how several of these gifts primarily operate in your life as you learn where God's going to use you in these gifts. It does not mean He can't ever use you in, in one or two or three of these other gifts, several of these other gifts. But we got to learn by obviously yielding to the Holy Spirit, where does He primarily want to use me? This was something Brother Hagin taught on that you don't hear a lot about today. I don't have time to go through that in detail, but through other ministers, he picked up on an understanding that we as the body of Christ need to learn as we yield to the Holy Spirit where he's going to predominantly use us in these gifts. And if we know others that operate in these other gifts that we don't predominantly operate in and they're available, then if somebody obviously we know operates in the gifts of healings in our church, and somebody's coming to you for healing, it's good to say, hey, I happen to know brother, sister, so-and-so here operates in gifts of healings all the time. I would go to them and have them pray for you. Because we all together, thank God, hallelujah, make up the body of Christ and therefore can impact the world far better by learning where our gifts are and how to operate in those gifts. We need to believe for them to be in operation. But again, number two, we don't need to try to manifest those gifts. All right, I'm going to talk about this again Sunday as we get back into our teaching on living in the last days. The Bible's clear. Jesus said it's an evil and perverse generation that seeks a sign. So we're not seeking the sign. We're seeking Jesus. We're keeping our eyes on the Lord. We're yielding and listening to the leading of the Holy Spirit and putting our faith in, in, in everything He says we can do. And as we follow His leading, we certainly know and believe that He will manifest these gifts through us. Amen? And therefore we know that He will. Praise God. So again, out of these nine manifestation gifts, I want to back up for just a minute. I want to show you the three we're going to focus on. Verse 9. One of those is what we call the gift of faith. To another, faith or supernatural faith. So there's one of them. Another one, he says, is the gifts of healings, plural, gifts of healings. There's the second one we're going to talk about. The third one he talks about is working of miracles, working of miracles. So we're going to talk about those three tonight in relationship to receiving healing, all right? Now, as we get ready to do that, let me point out a couple things, and then I want to drop down and look at some more verses here real quick, okay? The gift of faith. The gift of faith is a gift of the Spirit to the believer. All right, let's focus first of all on the gift of faith. We're going to talk about gift of faith, working of miracles, gifts of healings. Let's start with the gift of faith. All right, the gift of faith is a gift of the Spirit to the believer that he might receive a miracle. We'll say that again. The gift of faith, this is supernatural faith we're talking about. This is not... Uh, faith that comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God, what we call general faith. This is a supernatural manifestation of faith that comes by the Spirit of God. The gift of faith is a gift of the Spirit to the believer that he might receive a miracle, whereas the working of miracles is a gift of the Spirit to the believer that he might work a miracle. All right? So the gift of faith is a supernatural faith given to a believer to receive a miracle. The working of miracles is a supernatural manifestation to the believer to work a miracle. Not receive one, but to work a miracle. But you're going to see tonight that the gift of faith and the working of miracles almost always operate hand in hand together. Okay? Now I want you to drop down in 1 Corinthians 12 for just a moment. Drop down to verse 27. I want to finish up with some verses here before we go back to our notes and then get into some other verses tonight. Verse 27, 
as he goes on down uh, after verse 11 talking about the gifts he goes on down here verse 12 all the way through verse 26 he talks about the importance of all the different members in the body not everybody's an eye not everybody's an ear not everybody's a hand you know not everybody's a foot we all have a different place to ro- a different role in the body and that even again relates to the aspects of the gifts of the spirit as the Holy Spirit distributes those as he wills all right look at verse 27 now you are the body of Christ say I am the body of Christ amen you are the body of Christ but your members members individually Verse 28, God has appointed these in the church. God has appointed these ministry gifts in the church. First, apostles. Second, prophets. Third, teachers. Now notice this. After that, miracles are those who will operate in the working of miracles. This is a ministry gift that is given within the church that, that, that part of the gifts of the Spirit that's working of miracles, God will take that gift of the Spirit and he will, he will apply that into a person's life in the church who is going to predominantly operate in a working of miracles. So again, God will distribute this very gift, this gift of miracles in the church. Notice what's next uh, in there in verse 28. Also then gifts of healings. And he goes on to talk about helps, administrations, variety of tongues. Now notice this, verse 29, are all apostles? Answer, no. Again, Jesus had the Spirit without uh, measure. We have the Spirit by measure. Because we have the Spirit by measure, not everybody's going to be an apostle. Number two, are all prophets? Answer to that, no. Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? No, not everybody's going to actually operate in working of miracles. But guess what? Some are. And and obviously, if God's called us to do that, and I'll explain that in just a minute what that is, uh, praise God, we want to function in that gift. Verse 30, do all have gifts of healings? Is everybody in the body of Christ going to operate as a ministry in the the area of gifts of healings? No, uh, because not all are apostles, not all are prophets. Now, wait a minute. That doesn't mean we can't administer healing. Remember, we've we've talked about already who has the ability to lay hands on the sick and see them recover. Everybody everybody in the body has been called by God to lay hands on the sick and see them recover. That's different than the gifts of healings. See, the gifts of healings is a supernatural manifestation at that moment to bring healing from one person to another in the body of Christ or even a sinner doesn't matter but it doesn't mean as a believer you can't lay hands on the sick and see them recover doesn't mean you can't teach them the Word of God build their faith in the Word and have them simply receive uh, through simple faith uh, healing in their body so so don't take this to mean well then I'll never see anybody healed now I believe God every believer should be should be laying hands on the sick and seeing people get healed laying hands on the sick Mark 16, 18, and seeing somebody get healed does not mean that that's the gifts of healings. Praise God. We just simply know the Bible tells us every believer can do that. But in this context, again, of the gifts of the Spirit, of one of those gifts, gifts of healings, not everybody may see that operate in their life. Do all speak with tongues? Now, again, this is not referring to the ability for everybody to be baptized in the Holy Spirit and to speak in tongues for your personal edification. You can, any, everybody can do that. I don't have time to teach on that tonight. But this is in reference to what you actually have as a form of a tongue that's brought forth by one person in a service and then an interpretation of it. Notice the next phrase, do all interpret. See, not everybody's going to actually operate in the area of giving a tongue and then either being the one to interpret it or somebody else giving a tongue in a service and then being able to interpret that tongue, which is the same as simple prophecy the Bible teaches. But not everybody's going to do that. Verse 31, earnestly desire the best gifts, and yet I show you a more excellent way. All right? What are the best gifts? What's most needed at the time? But we got to recognize, again, recognizing what we already talked about, in uh, verse 11, it's the Holy Spirit that distributes these as, we will, as He wills. And it doesn't mean again that you may not ever, ever, never, ever see gifts of healings manifest through you. But 
God is going to see to it that he is going to distribute that gift, that, that aspect of ministry gift to certain people in the body. But please don't, don't forget, as a believer, we all have the ability to lay hands on the sick and see them recover without having gifts of healings to manifest in and through our lives. God's still healing them. He's healing them through the very uh, word of God, promise he gave them, that we can lay hands on the sick and they can recover. The anointing's in you. We've already talked about that, right? The Holy Spirit's in you. That anointing's in you, and it can transfer into them to heal them. But gifts of healings manifest upon someone as they lay hands on people to get healed. And we'll show you the difference here in just a minute. All right? Let's, let's go back over a couple things. Number one, again, just a reminder what we just said. The gift of faith is to the, is to the believer to receive a miracle. The working of miracles is to work a miracle. One gift, again, receives something, which is the gift of faith, and the other does something. So we're focusing again on, right now, the gift of faith and the working of miracles. And then we'll get to the gifts of healings as we wrap up tonight. So let's talk about the gift of faith and working of miracles as it relates to healing. All right? Let me define for you the working of miracles. Here's the definition of what the working of miracles is. All right? According to the gifts of the Spirit... And if you don't know, just a little side note, of the nine gifts of the Spirit, you can categorize those nine gifts in three different categories. And the one we're talking about, of the three gifts we're, we're dealing with, gift of faith, working of miracles, gifts of healings, they're what is known as the power gifts, because they all do something. The gift of faith does something. The working of miracles does something. The gifts of healings does something. Amen? The other are utterance gifts and revelation gifts. Word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discerning of spirits. We're not teaching on the gifts tonight. Those are revelation gifts. They all reveal something. All right? Simple prophecy, tongues and interpretation, they say something. They're utterance gifts. But we're talking about the power gifts. Amen. Gift of faith, working of miracles, gifts of healings. Right now we're talking about working of miracles. As a, and, and the gift of faith because they go hand in hand. So here's the definition of working of miracles. It is a divine intervention. Listen carefully. A divine intervention in the ordinary course of nature. A divine intervention from the spirit realm into the ordinary course of the natural realm. Because we know obviously that the working of miracles is coming from God in the realm of the spirit. But it is intervening in the ordinary course of the natural realm. It's a divine intervention in the ordinary course of, the nat of, the, of nature that can't be explained in the natural. So a simple way to say it is, I'm going to read this statement all the way through. Don't want to try to confuse you tonight. A divine intervention in the ordinary course of nature that can't be explained in the natural I'll say it one more time. This is working of miracles. Definition. It's a divine intervention in the ordinary course of nature that can't be explained in the natural. All right? So to break that down a little simpler, it is a supernatural miracle working power manifesting from the spirit realm into the natural realm. And it is now actually changing the course of of what would normally happen in the natural realm. And you can think about this of multiple examples in the Bible. All right, When Jesus turned water into wine, that was actually a working of a miracle. Because water, think about it, water in its natural course of time would never turn into wine. Water does not turn into wine as a natural course in the in the area of human in a, the area of the natural realm doesn't do that so what happened a, a working of a miracle a divine intervention changed the course of what would happen normally in the natural realm of that water and it turned it into wine that's a working of a miracle when jesus fed the 5000 that was a working of a miracle because bread you know taking its natural course would mold and, and obviously mildew. It, it would just rot away. Those fish that he uh, multiplied supernaturally, they would have rotted away. Over the natural course of time, they'd have just rotted away. But the working of miracles means there's a supernatural intervention 
from the spirit realm that changes the ordinary course of the natural realm. That's a working of a miracle. Raising of the dead is the primary way that we see the working of miracles manifest in the context, obviously, as it relates also to a healing, as we'll show in just a minute, as an example in Jesus' ministry. Because if you have a dead body, by natural course of time, it's going to decompose, obviously, over time. But in, a, in the context of a working of a miracle, what happens? You've now had a supernatural intervention in what would be the course of natural time of that body decomposing. It's now brought back to life. That's a working of a miracle. Now, in all three of those examples I just gave, water turning to wine, feeding of the 5,000, the multiplication of the bread and of the fish, and in the area of the raising of the dead, guess what's in operation right alongside that working of miracles? Gift of faith. The gift of faith is something that comes upon you manifested by the Holy Spirit. And when that gift of faith comes upon you, you just have an absolute knowing that you have the ability to receive what has been promised by God that actually can happen both in or through your life. In the context of Jesus turning the water into wine, there's no way by natural faith, just by, by praying, or excuse me, excuse me, by hearing and hearing by the word of God, there's no scriptures that tell us that you and I can turn water into wine. So there's no way by you and I just hearing and hearing by the word of God that we could think we could turn water to wine. That was a gift of faith. That was, that was supernatural faith that came upon Jesus that, that gave him the ability to know, I can receive and now do this miracle, perform this miracle. So he received that by the gift of faith, knowing he could do so, and then by speaking it forth, guess what happened? Working of a miracle. He changed the natural course of that water and turned it into wine. Same thing with the bread, multiplication of the bread and the fish. All right? There's no way by natural knowledge, by natural, excuse me, by faith in the Word of God alone, by just simply a regular general faith, by us building our faith on the Word of God. You, you couldn't sit there at home and just say, okay, I'm going to take a bread, piece of bread here, and I'm going to believe for that bread to manifest into multiple loaves. That wouldn't happen unless the gift of faith manifested that you now just know that you know that you know. You speak that into existence, and it's going to happen. And that's what Jesus did. Gift of faith came upon him to see the multiplication of those loaves and fish. He then offered that up to the Lord with thanks, and then he gave it to the disciples. Now think of this takes the gift of faith. Think about it. That faith is continuing in operation because at that time there's no multiplication of any loaves and there's no multiplication of fish. Back to the water turning to wine. When they first took those, uh, you know, those uh, uh, big old uh, jars, those vats filled with water, it wasn't wine at the time. They took it. It was still water. Then as they dipped into it, guess what? It turned into wine. And the same thing with the multiplication of the loaves and the fish. As they were taking those loaves and fish to the people, as the people began to pull out of the basket, uh, loaves uh, and fish, guess what? It began to multiply. So Jesus already knew, gift of faith, that was going to happen. And then he spoke that miracle into existence by telling the disciples to go distribute those loaves and fish to the people. And the same thing in the area of the raising of the dead. John 11. Turn to John 11. Let's use Jesus' example real quick. And I want to show you this in Jesus' life in raising Lazarus from the dead. Where the gift of faith, working of miracles, gifts of healings manifest in the area of raising Lazarus from the dead. I want you to see this with me in John chapter 11. Pick it up with me in verse 4. John 11 verse 4. Jesus here uh, heard about Lazarus being sick. When Jesus heard it, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but it is for the glory of God. Watch this, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, so when he had heard that he was sick, when he heard Lazarus was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. Now I want you to drop down with me, if you would, a little farther down here to verse 11. Verse 11, for the sake of time, so we can get to the focus of what we're going to study here. Notice this. These things Jesus said, he said after that he had said to them, Our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I may wake him up. 
Verse 12, Now his disciples said, Lord, if he sleeps, he'll get well. However, verse 13, Jesus spoke of his death. Jesus spoke of his death. But they thought that he was speaking about taking rest and sleep. Look at verse 14. Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. So the gift of faith is already in operation here. Because the gift of faith is already manifested upon Jesus for him to know that he can receive what he's about to say. He can receive this working of a miracle to go forth and manifest in Lazarus' lives to bring him back from the dead. Because Jesus already knows he's going to be raised from the dead. Now a lot of people would say, well, but he was the son of God. Come on, he, he raised people because from the dead because he was the son of God. Now, if Jesus raised people from the dead only because he was the son of God, then we couldn't do that because we don't have all of the spirit without measure. But Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead as a man on this earth who operated by the anointing of the Holy Spirit and those same gifts manifested on him. So that's how we operate in those gifts. That's why John 14, 12 says that if you believe in him, the works he did, we can do also. See, we couldn't do those works if we didn't have the same Holy Spirit and this, those same gifts to operate in our life. Jesus operated in those gifts, so we could as well. So again, this gift of faith is already in manifestation because Jesus already knows he's going to be raised from the dead. 15. He goes on and says, and I'm glad for your sakes that I was not there, that you may what? That you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him. So 16 says, then Thomas, who's called the twins, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. Verse 17 goes on and says that when, uh, so when Jesus came, he had found that he was already uh, dead, had been in the tomb for four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem. It was about two miles away. Verse 19 says, Many of the Jews had joined the women around Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. So he goes on to tell them that he was going to raise Lazarus from the dead. Now I want you to drop down with me, if you would, to verse 25. Verse 25, Jesus says to him here, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, shall live. And whoever lives and believe, whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said, yes, Lord, I believe that you're the Christ, the Son of God, who has come into the world. Now, when she had said these things, verse 28, she went her way, Martha did, called her sister Mary, saying, the teacher has come and is calling for you. So as soon as she had heard that, she arose quickly and she came to him. So now, Jesus, Martha, and Mary are all at the tomb together. Lazarus is in the tomb, been there four days dead. Drop down to verse 38 with me. Jesus, again groaning in himself, came to the tomb. Watch this. It was a cave and a stone lay against it. And Jesus said what? Take away the stone. There's the gift of faith in operation. He knows Lazarus is going to come out of that, out of that tomb. Well, how? Gift of faith. He, that gift of faith had rose up upon him already before he ever got there to know Lazarus is going to come out of that grave. And therefore, the gift of faith has the ability to know I can receive this miracle done as I now speak the word of God. The working of miracles is now going to go do what obviously God intends to do in Lazarus' life. Take away the stone. Martha, verse 39, Martha, the sister of him who, who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there's a stench, for he has been dead four days. Now remember, if a body's dead, what's the natural course that that body's going to take? De 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 <laughs> it's going to decompose. Amen. Decomposition, I was trying to say. So working of miracles is what? It's a supernatural intervention in the ordinary course of natural life. So we're about to see that happen. Verse 40, Jesus said to her, Did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? In other words, the manifest presence of God. 41, They took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. Jesus lifted his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you've heard me. And I know that you always hear me, but because of the people who were standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you have sent me. Verse 43, now when he had said these things, notice this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus, come forth. 44, and he who had died came out bound hand and foot with grave clothes, 
and his face was wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, Loose him and let him go. Now what you just saw was the gift of faith from the moment that they came to Jesus. Martha and Mary sent people to Jesus to tell him, Please come, Lazarus is at the point of death, lines at the point of death sick. When Jesus hears this, the gift of faith comes upon him. And, and by obviously him having knowledge of this through a word of, of uh, uh, knowledge, he knows that he's going to die. And this gift of faith is already upon him to know, but I'm going to raise him from the dead. Working of miracles is going to manifest, and I'm going to raise him from the dead. So Jesus knows this. The gift of faith begins right then to go into operation. It continues to operate right up through here to verse 43, because when Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth, that's the gift of faith speaking. Amen. Here, Jesus knew as I speak, I guarantee you what? Guess what? Working of miracles. Lazarus is going to come forth out of the grave. He who died, verse 44, came out. There was the manifestation of the working of miracles. Because we now have a supernatural intervention from the spirit realm that now changed the course in the natural realm. That body is no longer decomposing. It's now come back to life. You also have, in manifestation, the gifts of healings. Why? He had a sickness in his body that caused him to die. That gifts of healings had to have removed whatever sickness was there that killed him in the first place, or he would have died again. And this is very clearly what Brother Hagen teaches in his studies of the gift of faith, working of miracles, gifts of healings. Amen? So this is simply us understanding how the gift of faith and working of miracles work in the life of a believer. When that gift of faith manifests, I'm going to tell you what, it's going to be in a situation that's happening around you or, or something that has happened somewhere where people have asked you to come and, and if the gift of faith goes into operation, you're going to know it. They're, you're just going to be so unaware of anything else that's going on. And, and I'll guarantee you what, you're going to go right to what God's called you to do, and you're going to know what to do. Let's focus the last few minutes we have here on gifts of healings. Let's talk about that, all right? The manifested gifts of healings as one of the manifestation gifts of the Spirit. Gifts of healings are manifested. Now, we're not talking about gift of faith or working of miracles now. We're just talking about operating in the area of gifts of healings to have, have it manifest where somebody gets healed from a disease or a sickness or something like that, okay? Gifts of healings are manifested for the supernatural healing of diseases and infirmities without any natural means at all. So the gifts of healings are manifested for the supernatural healing of diseases and infirmities without any natural means at all. There is no natural intervention, all right? You lay your hands on somebody, and if this is an area where God would use you on a regular basis or even in, in an occasion, you know, on a rare occasion where he might need to use you in, in that area, guess what? That gifts of healings is going to manifest. There's, there's not a need for the gift of faith here. This is not a working of miracles. And it is a type of miracle, but it is the gifts of manifestations, not the working of miracles like in the raising of the dead. It's just the gifts of healings in manifestation to remove a disease, remove a sickness, or to, or, to, or to restore a body, to heal a body by the form of supernatural power by no natural means involved at all. Gifts of healings are supernatural manifestations of the Spirit. Gifts of healings are supernatural manifestations of the Spirit. They are manifested through someone to someone. So obviously it would be a gift of the Spirit in the case like this is not an area that God uses me a lot in his gifts of healings. I, I see people healed through laying on the hands, anointing with oil, you know, telling them what the Word says. But this is an area where God does use certain individuals that he will bring forth a manifestation of his healing power through you to somebody else. Gifts, that's the gifts of healings. All right? This happened throughout Jesus' ministry, obviously. But we're going to look at an example of the Apostle Paul. All right? Turn to Acts 28. Acts 28. And I'm going to show you how this differs in, in the context of you just laying hands on somebody as you would tell them about the, the power of Jesus to heal and that he has paid the price for their healing. 
And if you were telling them, if I lay hands upon you and you just believe that Jesus has already provided your healing, you can be healed. Uh, you can do that anywhere at any time. The gifts of healings is different. The gifts of healings is where somebody may need a healing and you, compelled by the Spirit, because it's a manifestation of the Spirit, you're just being led by the Spirit to go pray for them, for that healing in their body. All right? Acts 28, verse 7. In that region, this is Paul, actually in, uh, in Malta, he had been shipwrecked on the island of Malta. All right? In that region, there was an estate of a leading citizen of the island whose name was Publius who received us and he entertained us courteously for three days. It happened that the father of Publius lay sick of fever, of a fever and dysentery. Notice the very next part of this verse. Paul went into him. Paul went into him and prayed and laid his hands on him and healed him. It doesn't say Paul preached to him. It doesn't say Paul talked to him about what Jesus did for his healing. Paul compelled by the Holy Spirit, and I believe, as Scripture teaches, and Brother Hagin used to teach, he, he had to have a leading of God's love, compassion. As he heard about this man lying in there sick, there was a compassion that rose up in Paul to go lay hands on him. So Paul just goes in there. He doesn't preach to him. He doesn't teach to him. See, if you go to lay hands on the sick, as Matthew 16, 18 says, to, to, for them to receive healing, you need to tell them a little bit about what Jesus did to heal them first. That's not you being compelled by the Spirit as the Holy Spirit manifests the gifts of healings on you to go lay hands on them. You just see somebody sick. You want to go help them to receive healing. You go talk about what Jesus did and you tell them that Jesus died and paid the price for their healing. Would you like me to lay my hands upon you to pray for you for healing? Yes. That's just you obeying the Scriptures to lay hands on the sick and to see them recover. If they have faith in what you told them that Jesus did, they can receive their healing. But the gifts of healings is a manifestation of the Spirit that comes upon you to lay hands upon somebody in which healing is released into their body. That's what happened here. Paul just went into him, prayed for him, laid his hands on him, and he was healed. Verse, 20, or verse 9 goes on to say, So when this was done, the rest of those on the island who had diseases also came and were healed. And this is where most scholars believe this was gifts of healings and manifestation. I'll just give you an example in Jesus' ministry. When Jesus came out of the temple one day with Peter and the disciples, he went over just a short distance into Peter's home, and, and Peter's mother-in-law was laying there with a fever. The Bible doesn't say J Jesus preached to her, taught her, you know, that she could be healed. The Bible just says he went right over to her and grabbed her by the hand and she was instantly healed. That's the gifts of healings. And I'll guarantee you what, this is simply you knowing as the Holy Spirit manifests this gifts on you, you, you need to go lay hands on this person, pray for him. Got to be sensitive and got to be aware of that if this is an area that God wants to use you in the gifts of healings. This isn't, this isn't gift of faith involved. This isn't working of miracles. This is just the Holy Spirit manifesting this gift upon your life where you just simply know and you're compelled to go lay hands upon somebody. Can I pray for your healing? Or you just know you just lay hands on them and start praying for them just like Paul did, just like Jesus did. And guess what? Healing comes. Amen? Very important to note a couple things here real quick. The gifts of the Spirit, again, they're not manifested as man wills. The gifts of the Spirit are manifested as the Spirit wills. So in the area of the gift of faith and working of miracles, believe me, as the Spirit wills and those gifts manifest, as you're just simply, you know, uh, hungry for the gifts, you want to see them operate in your life, you believe in form to operate, you're studying the Word, you're open to the, to the leading of the Holy Spirit, believe me, when God wants to use you, He'll use you. So when these gifts manifest, they are as the Spirit wills. How about the gifts of healings? I guarantee you what, man, if the gifts of healings is, is something that's going to operate in your life, you're going to see consistently as you pray for people for healing that that gift is going to manifest. But I want to remind you as we get ready to close here real quick, I want to remind you of something. Please do not forget that even if this is not an area that you may see God use you consistently in gifts of healings and manifestation, 
It does not mean you should not believe God to pray for the sick as the Bible teaches. If, if we are to pray for the sick though, if we're not operating in gifts of healings on a consistent basis, what do we need to do? Tell them what the Word says. Isaiah 10, 27. The anointing of God removes burdens and destroys yokes. That includes disease, sickness, or any problem with somebody uh, in their body. Amen? The anointing is what does it. And the Word of God is anointed because the Word and God are one. So don't ever think for a moment... Well, I don't see the gifts of healings manifest, so I guess God doesn't want to use me in the area of healing. Sure He does. Mark 16, 18, as we talked about last week. I would not be focused on being someone who wonders if this is where God's going to use me. I would just be obedient to the call of God in our life to do what you can to go out and minister to people healing. But if that gifts of healings is going to manifest on your life, it's as the Spirit wills, it'll manifest. It'll manifest. You'll start noticing that. Now, if you don't know of the nine gifts of the Spirit where God wants to use you, you've not really seen any of these gifts manifest on your life, then I would begin by doing a study on the nine gifts of the Spirit. Uh, Kenneth Hagin has a great book on this, on uh, the Holy Spirit and His gifts that you can get, because number one, faith comes by here and hearing by the Word of God. So you need to have faith in those gifts to operate in your life. You need to know what they are, and you need to know how they work. When I got knowledge of these gifts and how they work, that's when I began to see the gifts of the Spirit that God uses me in manifest. And the primary area I see God use me in is words of wisdom, words of knowledge. Now, He also uses me at times in the gift of tongues and interpretation of tongues as well. I don't manifest it. I could be in a service or be somewhere praying for somebody, and all of a sudden a word comes to me something about their past. And the thing about that is, is that if that's truly from God, you know what? It bears witness with their spirit. And I'll guarantee you, this is where I see God consistently use me in. I don't go pray for somebody and try to manifest. I'm trying to get this across. The Holy Spirit manifests these gifts as He wills. The balance here is, we need to learn about them. We need to know what they are, how they operate. We need to have faith in those gifts to operate in our life. But we don't need to try to manifest them. Once we learn about them, we just need to be obedient to the Holy Spirit. And if you and I will focus not on trying to manifest gifts of the Spirit, but on trying to obey God as we go minister to people. Just do what you can to obey God. Lord, I'm about to go talk to this person. You know what they need. You know how to help them get that need received into their life. So I'm just going to be obedient to the Holy Spirit and however He wants to use me here. But if you've studied on the gifts and know how they operate, guess what? Now, as you're simply yielding to the Holy Spirit to minister to people, however God wants to use you, if those gifts, gifts of healings, gift of faith, or working of miracles, are to come into manifestation in that situation, the Holy Spirit will manifest them. You'll know it. You'll know it. In the area of the gifts of healings, man, you're just going to lay hands on them. That power of God's going to manifest, touch their body. They're going to get healed. Amen? Let me stop for just a moment real quick as we get ready to close and talking about one last thing about the gifts of the Spirit as Brother Hagen taught on these gifts many, many times for many years. Something my wife and I were talking about the other day, very important to understand. As believers, for our own personal lives, of what we're walking out every day, we're not to live by miracles. We're not to live by gifts of the Spirit for us. We're not to live by those. We're to live by faith. The, Brother Hagin said it time and time and time again. The greatest thing for you and I as a believer in our personal walk to do is to learn how to exercise simple faith in what the Word of God says because we're to walk by faith, not by sight. We're to live by faith, not miracles. Fred Price is good at teaching this as well. You and I should not want to live from miracle to miracle to miracle because that's only as the Spirit wills. But we can live by faith every day. We can receive everything God's promised for us by putting faith in this Word. But a part of what we should have faith for as well is the manifestation gifts of the Spirit as the Spirit wills, which is going to bless somebody else. It's going to minister to them. It's going to touch their life. So no doubt we should believe in the gifts of the Spirit. The primary place that Brother Hagin said he saw these gifts manifest through his life to others was in the lives of sinners who did not have the faith to receive what God had provided, 
or in the lives of baby Christians who didn't have the faith to receive it as well. But some point as you develop and grow as a believer, God's going to expect you for your personal life to walk by faith in the promises of God's Word. Amen. But it doesn't mean we can't put faith in God using us in those gifts as well. So one last time again, the gifts of the Spirit are distributed as the Spirit wills. We don't determine that. He does. And they're manifested as the Spirit wills. We don't determine that either. He does. What's our part? Learn about them. Believe God to use you in them because He wants to use you in those gifts. And then just simply walk in obedience to the Word of God. Every opportunity you have to share your faith, share the gospel, talk to people about what God's done for them, be obedient to the leading of the Holy Spirit. If God's going to use you in the area of gifts of healings, He'll manifest that gift through your life as you're just simply hungry to, use, hungry to be used by God, walking in obedience to the Word of God, He'll use you. I'll guarantee you. Amen. So that's how the gifts of the Spirit, excuse me, the gifts of the Spirit can operate in our lives, through our lives, in the area of healing. As a child of God, this is a part of what God wants to use us in. Our focus, look to Jesus, the author and finish your faith. Stay in the Word. Keep being obedient to what the Word of God tells you for your life personally and being obedient to be used by God every day. Look for opportunities. Uh, I'll make the statement that Brother Hagin used to make. Follow the love flow. Where you're feeling compassion to reach out to somebody, follow that. Go to them. Uh, let God use you. Let God talk to them. Praise God. And however God wants to use you, man, Lord, use us. Amen.